Hello deepest dudes and dolls, I'm Caricature and welcome back to my perfect, precocious and percolating review show, Very Slay, going over each and every one of the main stage runway looks of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. We've got one interesting runway theme this week with Faster Pussycat Wig Wig being the name, which I don't know what whoever came up with that name was on, but whatever it was, it must have been hitting good that day. Basically, they just had to wear whatever look they wanted, just with a pussycat wig. I know you've already seen this look if you watched my Persona 3 Reload of episodes 1 and 2, but it's just the way the cookie crumbled this week. This is just the way the schedule worked out. Deal with it. I'm not gonna go over the performance looks from the Girl Group Challenge. I want to just really focus on the runways because there's a lot of things I have to edit this week. I've got multiple hours long videos coming over the next month for you all, with all the gameplay stuff we're doing. So we're gonna pare down a little bit in some regards of what we're doing. And so we're, for now, we're just gonna focus on the runway looks. As always, if you're not familiar with the format, if I think a look is just fine, we give it an okay. If I really love a look, we give it a big ol' slay. If I'm not a fan of it, then I give it a nay. I figured I'd keep all of those in there until we hit 500 subscribers. And then once we've hit the 500, I think we've gotten enough people on board, at least at that point, who would understand what's going on and then I don't need to explain it anymore. So, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into these looks. First up this week is Morphe and Love Dion. I love this. I love, 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 love this. This is my favorite look she's worn so far in the season. I love that she's playing with a very different silhouette. It very much gives me Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman, which I think is kind of funny considering we got a Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman look from Maya earlier in the episode in the mini challenge as well. I like this better. I like the cat scratches on the back. I love how she just accents that with glitter. It's a really smart touch and I love, love this hair on her. She's got a face that rocks short hair really well and the fact that the tips of the bang in this and they have little gems and jewels hanging off of it just adds that little, that little extra, no, it just adds that little extra bit of decadence to the whole look that I'm a really big fan of. I think this looks incredible. All of the stitching and the print on the garment looks great. It's placed really well. It all makes sense. So for me, Obviously, this is gonna be a slay. Up next is Q. I really like the hair in this. I think the finger wave and the bang looks really, really nice. The makeup is interesting, it's different for her. And I like seeing her do something that's not like kind of this 40s, 50s old Hollywood star moment. It feels very different, but still her aesthetic. I really like the color of the garment. I like the fabric treatment. The silhouette looks great. This feels very Joan of Arc. But this really gets me together. I really enjoy this a lot. Probably my least favorite thing that I've seen her wear on the runway so far, but overall it's still a really solid look and I still really enjoy it and I love the sleeves. The sleeves are probably my favorite part of the entire thing, obviously giving this a slay. Up next we have Safira Crystal. This is like genius to me, I have to say. The Dr. Evil nod is so good. But the, the garment alone, I think is really solid. It's really well constructed and it looks incredible on her. I will say the wig when I first saw it, I thought, oh, this is not good, Diva. This is just, no, I, I did not like the wig. It looked like a really shitty wig until I realized that it was the backside of a cat. When she turned around and you see the cat's face, that's when I was sold. And I was sold even more when she took the cat off of her head and walked around with it with the pinky up, that was that was camp. It was very funny. Conceptually, I thought this was really, really strong, and I think the overall construction of the garment, the silhouette, the color choice, every aspect of it, really well tailored, really well designed, really well executed. So this is gonna be another slave for me today. And rounding out this first group, it's Dawn. This is my favorite look she's worn this season as well. I think this is the most Dawn look from what I'm familiar with of her that we've seen up to this point in the competition. I actually really like the take of the pussycat wig that's structured underneath the bowl cut. Really like it with the blue skin and the elf ears. She just has this rig really well proportioned silhouette with the head alone. Kind of creates like a diamond shape between the head, the elf ears, and her chin, which visually is really striking on the runway. This really deconstructed clashing patterns in prints and textile fabrics, really, really strong. And I think this is the most fully realized idea that's done at the best level of execution of what we've seen out of her runway packages so far. So it should be no surprise to anybody that I'm giving her a slay as well. The way everything is cut at an angle, it all really leads your eye through the look in a well-designed way. 
Up next from the second group this week, we have Plasma. I really thought this was a fun idea to take Hermes, but make him like a Y2K femme figure. The wings coming off of the headphones I think is a really fun idea. I think the silhouette of the sleeves, the feathers, really, really good and the feather usage really allows for some fun movement. The skirt is cut really well. I also really like the boots with the gold accents on them. She's another one this week where this is my favorite thing she's worn on the runway from top to bottom. I think this is like, I think this is her most fun concept and it partially because it's so outside of the normal kind of vintage era that she lives in. Even with Cher last week, I thought that was a really strong look for her. I prefer this look though because it's more original, it's got a sense of whimsy to it. For me, it's a slay. Up next, we have a mandatory meeting. For me, this is one of the weaker looks of the night, partially because the concept I think is really strong on its own. It's a really cool silhouette and I initially when she came around the corner, I was excited by it. But then once I got up and started looking at the details, there is some issues. The thing that I really don't like about it is the skirt because it really widens her out because it's so off the hip in terms of the silhouette. It's just a really strange structure. But the silhouette and the shape she got out of it is interesting and I like that part of it. I love her. I love her personality and I love her ideas um, sometimes. This one in particular, I really did love. It comes down to a matter of level of execution because everyone around her, their looks are so clean and so polished and put together that it makes hers really stand out by comparison. Conceptually, she's miles ahead of some of these folks. So I'm giving her credit for that. I think had she not had the two mannequin heads in the nest with her and just had some other eggs to help it really sell that she was supposed to be using the wig to create the top half of an eggshell, some little birds or something around the nest, I think that might have sold it just a little bit better than what this execution ultimately did. For me, it's okay. Up next is Tsunami Muse. I love this. I love a pants on the runway moment. It was giving very matador, but it was also kind of giving me like Pepsi commercial Michael Jackson just a little bit. Like the, my favorite part of this whole thing, the jacket is really, really nice, but just from a design and silhouette perspective, this first stole that is draped over one shoulder and then long enough that it acts like a long train or a coattail almost is such a good touch because this look without that is pretty simple. I think having that stole there, it helps really exaggerate the silhouette and it adds this level of extra glam to the whole thing. I really love this. Her makeup is incredible as always and I also like that this pussycat wig is not just like a flat, just like sculpted to the head wig. There's some styling to it that really makes it on its own stand out against some of the others this week. Yet again, another slay. Up next is Plain Jane. Now at first, I didn't really care for this because I'm not the biggest fan of, you know, BDSM really large tit looks. I think they can end up going cliche really easily. What I did end up really enjoying about this is this latex bodysuit. I didn't realize that the nude illusion parts on this, at first I didn't realize that the nude illusion parts of it were also in the latex. I think that helps take the look to the next level. The body silhouette in general is great. To me, the wig is kind of secondary. It's one of the least implemented into the design or into the concept compared to the rest of the cast. But I also don't think that it takes away from the look in any real way, shape, or form. So I'm still gonna give her a slay. Up next, we have Geneva Carr. This 1920s kind of silhouette and sensibility, but with this kind of Lisa Frank rainbow cheetah print mixed into the look with the gloves and on the bodice and as the lining of the skirt is very fun. It's probably my favorite look that she's done so far on the runway. This silhouette looks great on her. Last week I talked about it a little bit that she's, the way she's built, she's got a very long torso. I think this particular silhouette where the skirt hits is Correct. I like it, but I'm only gonna give this an okay because I hate that the tights are cut off at the ankle. It drives me up a wall. Up next, we have Maya Amon LePage. Her look is really, really simple, and so I think it doesn't stand out against the crowd as much as the others do this week, but I think this is my favorite look of hers. She says in her presentation that due to the fact that she has such a small hairstyle, she went big with the shoulders, which is such a smart point to do. If you've got a really small shape up here, you need to exaggerate 
hydrate other areas. I think it really helps balance out things from a drag silhouette perspective because she still has that level of exaggeration that takes it into that drag space instead of just being like a normal costume, a normal dress, just with a short wig and bangs. And I think in terms of her presentation, this feels like the most confident she's been on the runway. You can really feel her energy on the runway this time, which is very refreshing to see at this point in the competition for her. And I'm excited to see what's gonna come next out of her going forward. I think if this was on any other runway, I would probably just be giving it an okay. But on this runway for her, I'm gonna give it a slay. Up next, we have Megami. This is another look that, like Maya's, I think is very, very simple. And if this was on a different runway, I probably wouldn't be giving it as high of an opinion as what I have of it. But I think this idea is really, really strong. And unlike Amanda's, who had a strong idea, but a kind of a rough execution, I think this is a strong idea executed very well. I love the idea. Since it's a pixie cut runway, literally being a pixie with some cuts or a pixie who will cut you, like it feels very like pop punk. I really like it a lot. I think the body's right. I think the sheer fabric treatment is done really well. I actually really like the fact that she wore the wig backwards, which I think works really well for this concept. Love her makeup. And I also really like the, the, the little tiny wings in the back. It's really cute. It's just a really tiny detail of the look that I think really helps bring the whole thing home. She's kind of giving me like punk Neopets fairy in a way, but also, you know, like this is the fairy godmother for the bad bitches. And I'm very here for that energy. So for me, again, if this was on a different runway, I think the look I would normally be giving it an okay. But for this particular runway and this theme, it's a slay for me. And closing out this week, we have Nymphia Wind. Come on, really girl, like you have to serve it this hard every single time. This is perfection. There is not a single thing off about this look. The silhouette is great on its own. The garment is absolutely gorgeous. I really like the traditional silhouette that she went with. You know me, I love a bow that's got kind of like a foxtail sort of dangly energy to it. I love this hat. My favorite part about this though is that when she takes the hat off, the wig is a, a, like Safira's. It's a literal cat. Her cat wig is done better than Safira's was. I wonder if this was the same person who did her banana wig maybe because it's such a conceptual wig that's done like a sculptural piece. It's really cool. And then she takes that wig off and this like red little finger wave moment Girl, this is just so good. She's not letting anyone breathe on this runway. My God. And then when she takes the pussycat wig off and she's bald and then turns around and I'm not really sure what the point was with the vagina applique and the little wispy hairs above it on the head. It, but it's kind of camp because it's so silly. I also have to say, she's got a good head shape to be bald. Not everybody can pull off a bald look like that. So props to her. Everything about this, the details are all done right, the proportions are done right, the styling is done correct. I have no notes for this one other than it's just perfect. So giving her a slay too. It's a strong week this week, y'all. I mean, if I was going off concepts at the bare minimum, every single person would be getting a slay this week. I think at a base level, every single look this week was at the very least good. So I know it's not necessarily the most exciting of episodes to watch because I don't have really a ton of feedback to give people that I think would have really improved their looks or that I think would have made overall a better presentation outside of the couple that I gave. But by golly, if this is gonna be the caliber of the rest of the runways this season, I'm gonna have one heck of a time trying to pick a winner every week. And speaking of winners, I think it's time that we pick our slay of the day, which like all of the others so far, will be going into a post crowning ranking video, deciding which look is ultimately my favorite of the entire competition. That is my grand slay of the season, which will be getting a full illustration upon that reveal. For me, I think it's ultimately between two people this week. I think I have to give it to Nymphia again, her third time already. Morphine was right under her though, like really giving the girl a run for her money. And if she keeps that up, I wouldn't be surprised if she takes a spot in this list sooner or later. If you enjoyed the content, as always, do not hesitate to hit that little subscribe button to get all the very slay action right into your subscription feeds. And if you wanna know every single time a video comes up this month, because there's gonna be one basically every day for the next six weeks or so. So if that sounds like fun to you, 
then definitely hit that notification bell so you can be among the first to know and get in on all of the action. Be sure to come hang out with us on Twitch if you want to join the fun live. But if you want to just watch it over here too, that's great. And I'd appreciate it because it's going to help rock up those watch hours and every single one of them counts. In the last month alone, we've done about 160, which is incredible to me. And we are sitting right under 450 at the time I'm recording this. The fact we're almost a sixth of the way there. And before long, we're going to be 20% of the way to 3000. So if y'all watch this 100 plus hour game that we're going to be uploading over here, I think it's just going to be a matter of time before we get the numbers we need to start getting things off the ground with the channel. And I'm really excited for whatever that may be. I know this makeup looks a little crazy today with this red eyebrow, but I promise it will make sense at some point when I get around to doing the draws play that this look is for. It's really my thing and I started doing drag on Twitch and drag in general and I cannot wait to be ushering in a new era of draws play as well as this new era of very slay and all of the fierce play diva let's play content we'll be doing as well. And I know I say it every time and, I, and I'm a skipping record at this point but I'm genuinely enjoying doing all of this so much even if my stuff is kind of flopping in some regard and I haven't felt this like reinvigorated about content or about what I'm doing with my drag what I'm doing with video gaming with art anything I have not felt like this fired up to work and succeed in a really long time so the fact that you all are supporting it really means the world and it tells me that I'm on the right track and we will see you the next time we see you, whether that's tomorrow for Persona, later in the week for Espana All-Stars, and anything else that comes down the pipeline. But as always, go on out there, y'all. Stay kind, stay queer, and make sure your day is very sly.